one of the main things that, that uh, being at the knife shop, uh, yeah, I've been speaking to a lot of people, and it's kind of uh, taught me, is that if you do like, uh, say, like a wall handle stack, and you have like a copper spacer somewhere mm -hmm. in there, or a brass spacer, or even stainless steels, any sort of you know uh, metal spacer in there, uh, when the when the knife changes, when the knife changes homes, yeah, and the hu and the humidity is different, the wood you know reacts to that, and you can have that spacer actually uh, rise up right. and actually dig into the per the user's hand. Uh, so I found a lot of people were quite adamant about disliking spacers. So oh, that's yeah. why in a lot of my work, I didn't put spacers. And then not too long ago, I just started thinking like, well, hold on, hold, hold, hold on a second. Well, okay, if they, what's wrong with the museum fit? Mm -hmm. that, that, would solve the, that would solve the whole issue, wouldn't it? Yeah. You know, unless, unless I'm totally missing something. But uh, yeah, so I figured, okay, well, if I'm going to do a museum fit, I'm going to do it with something nice. So Millman gave me a couple blanks of, uh, of uh, uh, ancient bog oak. Beautiful. So I just, I, very careful cut with my table saw and boom, I have two yeah. wall handle blanks. So I'm nice. like, yeah. I could I could elaborate, you know. I, I, I instead of just saying I do knives, I, I do could knives. say that I do I do specifically ninety five percent kitchen knives, uh, inspired from the Japanese variety. Right. Yeah. So that's I, I would say that's a better a, a better explanation of what I do. Sweet, sweet. Yeah. And you're coming to Winnipeg from Toronto. Correct. And Winnipeg doesn't really have much of a like retail knife much of anything here in Winnipeg. There's, there's an odd little store here in town. So I'm kind of curious to see how things will work for you. Um, especially yeah, being Japanese knives. I think that's a cool I've noticed. thing that people will be interested in seeing. So yeah, I've, I, I Googled, I've tried to see what's around Winnipeg, what's in Winnipeg knife related. Uh, I tried to see if there's any niche Japanese knife stores in Winnipeg. It's um, at least Google didn't turn up too much for me. So no. it'll be, I mean, Hey, you know what? It'll be really exciting to bring my stuff over and kind of, I guess, open the market for a day, for a day in Winnipeg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're coming in on Friday yep. and then prepping for the show on Saturday. We'll probably end up making something in the shop. Um, I've got a nice I'm looking forward to that. Apex Ultra, which is a uh, super steel. Ooh, it, it's, ooh, it is rare. <laughs> it's very rare and yeah. expensive. It is, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah, gifted I, that piece, so I was pretty happy about it. I did some heat treatment for uh, a local smith here, and he was like, "Hey, I brought you a little piece of Apex Ultra," and I was like, "Ooh, all right, sounds good." Lucky you. Yeah, yeah. I tried to source that, and I'd say like a piece that's what 15 inches long, uh, 0. 0.2 inches thick, and 1.95 inches wide, something like that. After yeah. tax, import, everything, they'll cost probably north of 200 bucks. Ouch. Exactly. <laughs> Crazy. But, but you put it on, you put an Apex Ultra plate on the market, knife nerds gravitate towards it because they're just like, ooh, ooh, I know yeah. that. Yeah. It'd be cool if we could actually hammer up the blank on Saturday and then bring it out on Sunday and kind of, could we pre-sell it before it's completed? We could, we could do a pre-sale. We could, we could yeah. put like, you know, available for pre-order. We could totally do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we could uh, prepare some... Uh, uh, handle concept. That's what you know, I was going like, to say. Yeah. I, I, I feel if we're doing like maybe like a Samurai billet with uh, Apex Ultra, we got to get something real bougie for the handle. Like, I don't know, snake wood, something, something real classy. You know what I mean? What, what did you call it? Snake wood? Snake wood. What is that? So <clears throat> I, I think I have it downstairs, but snake wood is. Oh, uh, snake wood. Okay. Mm, yeah. It's, it's just got this deep red hue to it. It's got thoughts almost like, you know, kind of the patterns of, uh, on, on a snake. I, I feel like it's, it's in the same family as leopard wood. But okay. The colors are a lot more just punchy, pleasing on the eyes. Okay. Just like it's a really, I don't want to say it's like a, a like a bright red, but more of a more of a deep red with a, a touch of brown. Okay. Yeah, it really, it, it's it's just really nice. Cool. All right. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just I've, something classic. Yeah. Like I've got some. Would we put just Damascus on the outside? Damascus cladding. That would suit it well or would yeah, that be yeah. too much overdoing no, it no 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 if you're if you're doing something i mean so you could do with, with apex ultra can almost go anywhere you could do wrought iron you could do you could do damascus cladding you just you just get yeah, this is true but yeah. uh you know, you, it's, yeah I'd, I'd say formal dress attire okay yeah, yeah. Some, uh, something dark then comes to mind yeah okay you so know, we'll, yeah we're, we'll, we're, we're going someplace out. nice we'll do some form of damascus uh 1084 heavy towards the outside and then uh apex ultra in the core yeah that would be nice yeah uh, I was going to ask you what uh, what are you bringing to the show? Oh, that's a good question. I just happen to be by my humble knife cabinet. So let's, <laughs> let's go take let's a look, shall it. we? Um, this side here, we have a selection of brute to forge with Guto, Bunka, Petty, and then a smaller pair, uh, a larger pairing. Then moving mm -hmm. over here, uh, we have the Honyaki side of things. So we have a Nikiri, we have uh, a smaller Bunka, uh, a larger Guto. This I think is uh, was a yeah, two thirty no two thirty Guto, and then Beautiful. this is I believe a two twenty five two twenty. I don't trust me on my measurements, but uh, 
pearl handles, mammoth accents, mammoth tusk. Oh, this one might look familiar to you, eh? It sure does. Yeah. Damn, that's good. <laughs> it, it turned out, it turned out really nice. Um, and then, uh, I like to use a lot of Nara in my handles. Uh, okay. Just cause it's a, it's a Japanese wood and it just, I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up, but in, in person, it just, the grain, the waviness of it, it's, mm. you know, it's in, it's in the family of mahogany. It's, okay. it's, it's a really nice wood. And then, uh, I use Rengus as well. Rengus is fairly plain, but it just, yeah, it's, it's, it's very pleasing for the eyes. Yeah. So, so this is what I have here. Um, everything else is going to be on my, well, I guess everything on my website is coming with me as well, Okay. Uh, wow. which is not in my case, but is at the knife shop that uh, I basically have a showroom at. Nice, nice. Uh, so I guess the day before I fly, I'll be going there to pick up whatever hasn't sold and yeah. uh, packing it up and taking it with me. How many knives do you think you have up there at your store? I would say, yeah, let's see, I'm, gonna, I'm going to guess I'm going to have five kitchen-based knives and I'll be bringing my uh, Damascus Gentleman's Recurve with me. Okay. Yeah. So you'll have, so, uh, I'll have, I'll have eight, one or two. Five, non... Yeah, 15 yeah. knives or so. That's, like that's that. all. I've got, uh, I've got, what, eight, eight in the case there. Yeah, something in the 12, 13. Maybe if I if I haul ass, I can push 14, 15. Yeah. We'll see what happens. We'll see yeah. what happens. I want to yeah, prioritize quality over quantity. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Get yeah. there with it. But like most of the steel that I work with now is 1095 or uh, 125 CR1 mm -hmm. or 135 CR3 or otherwise W2. But okay. um, uh, those are those are my main my main squeezes. If right. I bring something else like a, like an EDC or something like that, I'll slip into like a 1075, 1085 uh, area. Right, you know, right. I love, I and that's love where... it. That's kind of where I sit. Like I like doing both, like the bushcraft blades and the kitchen yeah. knives. And because I do a lot of that bushcraft stuff, I tend to go towards ADCRV2 because it kind of does the same as the 1084 uh, in terms of like finishing mm -hmm. and, and hardness and heat treatment is all super similar. And it's strong as hell. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. Like there's a reason why people use it. It's yeah. just well, and so it's 1084 really, but it's it's yeah. I'm wondering if I should just move to 1084 now with the issues I've had. But I mean, I I love I love 10 series steel. I think yeah. I, th I think it's it's underrated um, with like all of these fancy new steels around. Yeah. 10 series is kind of, you know, not getting the the love that it, it really deserves because you can do some really cool stuff with it. Um, but I mean, to each their own, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Follow the trends or stick to the tried and true. I mean, here we are just a moment ago talking about Apex, Apex Ultra. Ultra. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Cool. Well, I will see you at Cedar and Steel on November 10th at the King's Head Pub. Oh, yeah. We're going to set up earlier, but show starts at noon, ends at five. And then... We're probably going to hang out there, have some beers. Uh, we're sponsored by Trans Canada Brewing and uh, Urban Lumber as well. So it's it's going to be a fun time. I'm glad you're coming. And, Thank you. Uh, I appreciate the invite. That's uh, I, I can't wait. Yeah, yeah.